Welcome back. If you're new to this channel, thank you for stopping back in. Today we're doing what I call Spotlight News. Spotlight News is just that. We talk about news. There'd be mostly news involving racing and of course models. So today I want to talk about the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's coming up this weekend. That's correct. So it's running from Saturday until Sunday. If you're unfamiliar with the 24 Hours of Le Mans, it's exactly that. It is an automobile race that runs for 24 hours. There was a video that I did a few months ago in regards to the Daytona 24 hours, and it's the same format where you have this combination of different spec sports cars that race on a track or a course for 24 hours, and it is fantastic. If you're unfamiliar, you want to get more familiar with this form of racing, I can suggest one movie, and that is the Steve McQueen Le Mans movie. The very first 20 minutes of that movie are worth watching if you don't watch the rest of it. It gives you the essence of how these races are performed. Also, if you're familiar with Gran Turismo, a lot of those cars that are in that game are the cars that you would see in a typical 24-hour endurance race. Because that's exactly what the 24 hours is. It's an endurance race. If you didn't know, just a little fun fact, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which is in France, by the way, if you didn't know already, started out with these two French gentlemen who challenged each other to see if their automobiles would last 24 hours. That is actually how it all started. And this year special because it's the 100th year of the running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Now let's talk about the cars. There are four classes of cars running in this race. And the first one is what we call hypercar. It is the top tier class. Hypercar is a combination of a naturally aspirated motor or turbocharged motor that's coupled with a hybrid system. These cars run anywhere from 600 to 750 horsepower. They are very lightweight. This is the first year that you actually have a combination of what we call the World Endurance Championship spec. That would be that LDM car. And then you also have what is called LMDH. So LMH is the Le Mans hypercar. That would be the WEC's version of this particular class. LMDH would be the United States form of this same class. So the LMDH stands for Le Mans Daytona Hypercar. Now the cars are configured just a little bit different. In Europe, again at LMH, those cars are really um, built to the specifications that the um, sanctioned body gives them. But it allows them to use any type of hybrid system. They don't even have to use a hybrid system because there are a few cars that don't have any um, hybrid system or electronics at all to drive the drivetrain. So you could have a naturally aspirated motor that runs in this class, but by far the faster cars are going to have that, uh, cup, that naturally aspirated engine coupled with the hybrid system. But again, they can play around with the type of cylinders they want. So it could be a four, six, and eight cylinder that's coupled with this uh, hybrid system. Or, you know, again, they could have a fully naturally aspirated engine. The IMSA spec or US spec um, hypercar, it's a little bit different. They have to follow a specific regulation when it comes to their hybrid system. So on their electronic hybrid system, all of those systems are exactly the same. And each one of those only give, and I say only compared to the European ones, they only allow up to 50 horsepower on that hybrid system. But they can couple it again to any type of configuration. So that could be in the form of a four cylinder, six or eight, or even a 12. There isn't a 12 out there, but you could do that if you wanted to. The next class is what we call the LMP2 class. And that class is definitely more of a spec class. And so what I mean by spec, pretty much all the cars are the same. They all run the same motor. And that would be that Gibson V8 motor that's coupled with a turbocharger. Now they do have a choice of chassis manufacturers. I believe they have a choice of about four. There is one dominant chassis that most of the teams are choosing and that's that Orica chassis. That's a French uh, brand. 
But they do have other chassis. Riley would be another example of a chassis they could choose. It's just the Rikas has been the most popular one. Lige is another one that comes to mind as well. The third class is what we call GTE Am. And these are the more traditional sports cars. The cars that you probably will see the shape and say, yeah, I can tell that's a Porsche. Yeah, I can tell that's a um, Lamborghini. So these cars are based off of production cars, but obviously they're now homologated and they have parts of a racing car. So these cars have anywhere from an eight cylinder engine, by far most of them do, but then you also have the flat six that runs in the Porsches as well. They can be turbocharged or naturally aspirated. The reason why it's called GTE AM is because these, this class consists of amateur drivers coupled with, with at least one professional driver. So something that I should have mentioned earlier, again, I forget some of you are probably not familiar with the Le Mans race. As I said, this race runs for 24 hours. That does not mean that one driver is driving a car for 24 hours. They would fall asleep and crash. There's usually anywhere from three to four drivers that switch in phases of the race um, to relieve the other drivers. So you do have that switching going back and forth and it actually adds to the dynamics of the race. I also mentioned there was a fourth class. That fourth class is what we call more of an experimental class or an exhibition class. And this year, we have participation from NASCAR. They are bringing a naturally aspirated Camaro. That car is going to stand out like a brick out there. But I can tell you this, just from the testing, and I'm pretty sure qualifying has happened already, but I haven't looked at it yet and I don't want to give it away. But this being an experimental class, they get to run around basically for, like I said, exhibition. They are not really competing with the other cars. They will place, but again, it'll be an unofficial classification. This is usually done to bring millions of people who will be watching this race familiarization with NASCAR, for example. There have been other series that have done this as well. There have actually been some cars with experimental drivetrains and motors. There was a car a few years back that actually had a fully hydrogen motor running in the Le Mans race. Again, it's more so experimental. I can tell you a lot of times these cars do not finish the race because they are experimental. This particular car, it's possible it could finish. It's a very formulatic um, setup they have. And also, believe it or not, this car, as big as heavy as it looks, is actually faster than the GTE cars. Now there's a caveat to that. The GTE cars are based off of production cars. They do have what's called a carbon fiber tub, so it is lightweight, but it's more structured towards, again, being more or less like a production car. That NASCAR is on a tube chassis. So in other words, literally, it is a tube frame that's all welded together to form a car, and then it's covered in a shell to look like a production car. So the advantage of that, the car is much more lightweight. The other thing they have going for them is the motor they're running has over 750 horsepower. Typical GTE cars are running up to 600 horsepower. So there is a power difference as you can see with these cars. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, you would think that the GTE cars would probably get that car into turns, maybe on different tracks that is possible. But in Le Mans, 85% of the um, track, you're actually going full throttle, 85%. So that's a, quite a bit of straightaways. So that's why that NASCAR is actually faster than the GTE cars. But it'll be interesting to see if it actually finished. Just going back to the hypercars, which is what I really want to focus on, because we'd be here all day if I've talked about all the other classes. There are 16 cars participating in this. This is the top class. In Le Mans, that is very unusual. It's great news, and it just goes to show the resurgence of this sport. We have more people who are attending this year. It was a record crowd at that 24 hours of Daytona, and I would expect a record crowd at the Le Mans. The hypercars in this class, like I said, have 16 cars. The last time we had a car count that high was back in the late 80s in the Group C eras. That's how long it's been. 
Now, just to give you an idea of the cars, we have two Glickenhaus SG007s, three Cadillac Racing V-Series R's, two Peugeot's 9X8s, four Porsche 963s, four of them, two Ferrari's 99Ps, two Toyota's GR010s, and one Van Wall Vanderville. Now, the Glickenhaus and the Vanderville, both of those cars are naturally aspirated and they are the slowest cars in the class. So the advantage is always gonna go to the cars that are coupled with the hybrids. Now, I do have a favorite for this race. Um, I'm not sure if I wanna reveal, oh, I guess I'll reveal it. The favorite that I have, and I, I just really love these cars. I love the way they sound. I like the way they shape and, and they've been pretty competitive. And that would be the Porsche 963s. So I don't care which team, because there's like Joda and then there's Penske as well. I really don't care which team, but i really like to see that Porsche win. I think it'd be a really great thing. And I'm only rooting for them based off of what they've done so far in IMSA as well as the WEC so far this season as far as performance. Some may say that Ferrari would be even more competitive which they have. I mean, they placed pretty high in the uh, Spa race, which was, you know, the previous race before this one. And so they are very strong. But the thing I like about the Porsche is they just seem to be much more consistent with their car. They don't run into too many issues, and I'm pretty sure they've improved it. So it will be an exciting race. But unfortunately, I have a strong feeling that Toyota is going to win this year again. They have the most experience. They've had a head start two years ahead of time. So that is something to keep in mind, but we'll see. I strongly encourage you to watch the race. Um, I know in the US, if you have the Motor Trend channel, it will be on there all day long, as well as it'll be on your cable stations as well. That would be on um, Velocity, I think is what it's called. No, it's actually called the Motor Trend channel now. So it will be televised that way in Europe. I think you guys have the WEC um, app that you can subscribe to to see it. And I'm pretty sure some of your local stations will be showing it as well. Now we're moving on to the hot list. The hot list are models that are going to be released or have recently been released and they're going to sell out quickly. First, we have the Lamborghini Miura SVR. Now you might be saying to yourself, hasn't the reissue SVR been out for a while? Well, you'd be correct, except for this model's in a large 112 scale and the details are outstanding. This one should be out in the later part of this year. Next, we have the Ferrari 250 GTO in both street and racing versions. And of course, there are fully opening models. From the photos, these should sell out quickly if the price doesn't scare you away. I hear these are priced over $350 US. Acme Trading Company has announced the Calypso Green 5.04 Mustang Notchback. This is a limited run and has nostalgia written all over it. Almost Real made a splash with the Roof SCR and has recently released a Roof Rodeo concept car. It's not my thing, but you can expect that this will be well made. Salido Models has rolled out the number 77 and 24 Alfa Romero C42. That will be the Botas and Zao cars. Expect a review on this one. Finally, we have the two from AutoArt, the Lamborghini SC18 Austin and Daytona Gray and the Liberty Walk Silhouette Huracan GT in metallic yellow and metallic white. All of the aforementioned model information can be found on each of the company's respective websites or ask your local trusted retailer. And that concludes this week's hot list. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time.